Is this the thousands of heads topic? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, Apple studies thousands of heads. Invents audio ray tracing. EAX? Question mark. There's a six minute version of the I added the EAX Vision Pro bit. announcement. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, there's also like a, a bunch of videos on it already, including some people that have used it. But as far as my understanding goes, no one was able to capture footage of themselves using it. So you just have like them talking about it. Reactions. Um, they have finally announced said headset, the Vision Pro. It costs 3,500 US dollars. Oh boy. Uh, its interior screen is a pair of micro OLED uh, screens with 90 hertz refresh rates. They're 4K, right? Okay, yeah, that comes way later. Um, they have 90 hertz refresh rates and over 23 million pixels combined resulting that's in pretty 4K wild. plus resolution for each eye. Oh yeah, that's actually like super wild. Something yep. we've, I believe, all been asking for for a long time, so it makes sense. It also kind of makes sense that it comes at a high price point, but yeah. Uh, the headset has 12 cameras and five sensors, which monitor the user's hand movements and map the environment using true depth camera and LiDAR. The cameras can be used to take 3D pictures and video. The user can overlay AR images and apps over their environment or close themselves off completely in a virtual space. The audio system also uses that 3D map to create spatial audio, uh, what Apple calls audio ray tracing. I will be very um, interested to see Pro how completely you can actually isolate yourself. It doesn't look to be sealed particularly well. It kind of reminds me more of like the MetaQuest Pro where it's mm -hmm. VR. There's like brain gaps. But there's, yeah, yeah but there's, there's a ton of, of gaps where light can get in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, the Vision Pro can be controlled with eye motion, which I, from what I've heard, it's actually surprisingly good. Uh, voice commands and gestures. When interacting with people in the immediate environment, there is an external panel that shows the user's eyes. Um, that part's pretty interesting to me. Uh, the device has an onboard M2 chip running Vision OS and handling computation tasks, while a dedicated R1 chip deals with input from the various sensors and cameras. Community response has been conflicted, viewing the device as impressive, but really only for enthusiasts with a lot of disposable income given the price. Snow goggle aesthetic and two hour battery life. Others felt that the Vision Pro needed a clearer business use case and the ability to replace a traditional laptop in order to justify its price. Mark Zuckerberg addressed Apple's new headset during a company-wide meeting yesterday, I love this. where he said that Apple didn't demonstrate any major technical breakthroughs that Meta hasn't already explored. Uh, in quotes, there's a real philosophical difference in terms of how we're approaching this. Uh, in quotes again, our vision for the metaverse is fundamentally social. It's about people interacting in new ways and feeling closer in new ways. Our device is also about being active and doing things. By contrast, every demo they showed was a person sitting on a couch by themselves, which I don't think is actually true. Um, uh, no, they, they did have the one out. demo but where the... someone walks up to someone who's in a Vision Pro and uh, they start talking. So we see that we see the eyes feature. Um, yeah, the sentiment is fair. It, it didn't show like a huge range of scenarios. No, it didn't. It mostly it showed not be sitting true, and enjoying personal true. entertainment. Um, yes. I have I have a lot of questions about Vision Pro. Are we ready to start the discussion? The discussion portion of this first of all i gotta yeah. say i love the tech um they've gone 90 hertz which is fine um probably good enough but my god the resolution of these displays i am i'm so excited to put one of these on like there, there's no way to slice it other than that 23 million pixels is a lot of friggin pixels and at that kind of density, I, I, I actually, I do wonder, could, could I use a virtual desktop? However, there are a lot of things about this that feel very uh, developer kit, you know? Two hours of battery life? I can't even necessarily watch a movie on the plane without being plugged in. Yeah, two hours of battery life is pretty rough. It has that external battery pack, though. I wonder if there's any amount of 
uh, onboard battery. Like, I wonder if you could hot swap those battery packs. That's a good question. It's one I had that I haven't seen answered yet. Um, so if there's if there's mm -hmm. like a super capacitor on board or something, honestly, I doubt it. Like, I really doubt it. Um, what so you I think would you'd have to like shut down to swap. Is, is there even is that battery pack? I know it's I know it's tethered, but is it tethered just for weight? And that cable is like hard plugged in, or can do you know if that can, you can unplug from the battery pack to swap them out? Uh, that's a good question. What I suspect is that it's a uh, you can plug the battery in while the headset. Is, okay, external battery pack from what what, that, yeah. what I've seen. You can plug the battery in while the headset is plugged in. There's USB C. USB-C on the battery pack. So yeah, it looks like swapping the battery pack is going to be pretty much a non-issue. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah, it's good. It's I mean, also good that um, feels you, like a bit you can of a cheat. plug straight in because... Yeah, um, but in your scenario that you just described, watching a movie on a plane, that does mean you can do it now. For your entire flight, you could have this thing running. Mm, it's megs, megs, magnetic to the headset. Oh, why did they have to go proprietary for the connection? I mean, I, I love, I love magnetic connections. I really do. But this is just another opportunity for Apple to collect licensing fees on third-party accessories. And I feel like for a product that's thirty-five hundred dollars already, that's pretty rough. <sighs> What are your thoughts on the price point? I don't know. I I expected them to kind of loss lead on it. Um, I expected it to be affordable, like a, like a consumer priced dev kit. And instead, I just don't really understand what I was looking at during the presentation. It's priced like a professional VR or AR product, like. A lot of people don't realize this, but HoloLens, for example, is in use. It's a real product that is mm -hmm. really deployed in real workplaces. Um, like I yeah, saw, like the military and stuff too. Yeah, like I saw it when I was at Intel's Fab. You can, I could perform maintenance on on fabric on chip fab machinery with a HoloLens with someone just coaching me and with guides that will just show up in augmented reality and like I can do it it'll be like yeah go get this pick up this screwdriver it looks exactly like this okay uh, do, pull out this tray do this like it, it's kind of it's kind of cool and serious investments are being made into deploying this technology um, but the difference is that while HoloLens is also expensive just like the Vision Pro HoloLens is um, marketed for professional applications, whereas Apple came out with this professionally priced product, this enterprise priced product, and then wouldn't shut up about consumer applications for it. Is it enterprise price though? $3,500, like, yeah. Oh, okay, hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait. For the VR industry right now, yes, but if you compare it to Apple products, I don't know. If you look at the displays that it has, um, if you look at the chips that are in it, I don't know. I mean, the HoloLens 2 is literally launched at $3,500. So it doesn't matter what yeah, hardware is in it. I see your point. The hardware, sure, the hardware, it's it's got a computer in it. And at the price of an Apple yeah. computer, yeah, fine. If you look at, exactly, yes. But... but that doesn't change the fact that that's not a consumer electronics price point. Like it doesn't matter what's in it. The HoloLens, the HoloLens could have really great hardware in it that justifies the price, but that doesn't change the fact that it is not a consumer price. Like the average Joe buys an are, Xbox. Are MacBooks not consumer products? Yes and no. I mean, the MacBook Air is, but the MacBook Air starts at twelve hundred dollars or whatever. It doesn't start at thirty five hundred dollars. Yeah, but like I, I think. I think Apple's whole thing is like selling to people who think they're pros, right? Like I, I, I don't know. I don't I don't necessarily disagree. Sure, but, but what, I also don't necessarily think that it's a misstep. Like what, this feels very Apple to me. But what use case did they show that hasn't had an? Uh, and okay, I I know what your counterpoint is going to be. Apple doesn't invent anything; they refine. Blah 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 blah. But 
But what use case did they show that we haven't had an opportunity for people to say, oh, yeah, I'm interested in that? Like I was I was reminded watching it of this company, Vuzix. We used to carry their personal cinema uh, glasses back when I was at NCIX. And I don't know if they're if they're smart glasses or whatever. Like, I don't even know. I don't even know what their product stack is now, but they're basically just little. Uh, no, they're not that. Oh, look, it's uh, Google Glass. Um, OK, do they just have OK? Well, I don't even know if they have. I don't even know if they have these ones anymore, but they're basically just like a little personal theater that you just yeah they, they don't seem to have them anymore uh but you just sit and flip it down and it used lenses and built-in displays and you could watch movies on a you know 150 inch display uh from the comfort of your airline seat uh Vuzix apparently doesn't even make that anymore because nobody cared so what is it that apple is going to be adding with motion control and Man, I, I gotta I gotta really wonder about voice control. Just with how bad voice control is for everything and with how far oh, behind God, the curve yeah. Siri is, am I gonna wanna voice control anything? I, I, I do have some faith that Apple could do gesture control well, but I have serious doubts, pun intended, about what their capabilities are in terms of voice control. And so I'm sitting here going what are these use cases that will be unlocked for me? Okay, I could I could have my battle station be my headset instead of a bunch of monitors. Like part of their justification for it was, well, you're not going to need a TV, your monitors, or a sound system anymore. Monitor You'll just yeah. yeah, screen replacement. I mean, as long as nobody else needs to look at my TV or my monitors, which kind of comes back to what the Zuck was saying, where <laughs> this thing is what designed for people to use it forever alone. Um, I don't know. It's just a, it's a weird product. I don't understand what the sales pitch is, and I still don't. You can have your eyes on it, so you can interact with people. Again, that's a workplace feature. Why is it that I, if I'm at home and my kids are badgering me, well, I guess I better just get out of my mixed reality thing and do something with my kids. Like I don't. What is the use case where I need to quickly talk to someone, but I'm not going to get out of my virtual environment? Work. Be like. <clears throat> yeah, the like main one that I can think of is the airplane discussion, actually. Um, and, and this is like, not going to sell to a ton of people with just this argument. Um, but it's like, oh, you're sitting on an airplane and, and the uh, uh, stewardess comes by to give you a snack um, and they address you and you can like, you, you have that like weird graphic on the screen because you don't have pass through and then you look up at them and your eyes show up on the screen <laughs> and I you mean, can talk to them. Okay. Uh, Mark yeah. has tried it, said web surfing is good. Here's my problem with that. It's the same reason that I don't own a tablet. Web surfing on a tablet is objectively better than on a phone. It's a, it's just a bigger screen. You can see more, you can read more. Uh, consumption of content on a tablet it just it helps a lot right but i have to go get it i don't have it on me and yeah maybe this is just a me thing but the times that i surf the web because surf web surfing has a really specific meaning to me it's like hmm yeah i wonder what leopards eat right like it's it's this kind of just idle uh you know doom scrolling yeah, on yeah. doom scrolling it you know r slash you know watch people fail at things i don't even know if that's a thing it doesn't matter the point is it's like that sort of idle surfing yeah that's totally something that you could probably do from within a headset but i man for me to I, to set aside time to comment. do that but i'm not at my computer i'm not at my computer which would probably be better and i'm not oh, on yeah. the can where realistically I don't have my AR headset, I'm probably just on my phone. It's this tweener, uh, it's this in-between device. Maybe I take my AR headset to the can. It. Okay. <laughs> people will 100% do that. I, I, I will say that the web browsing comment is actually very interesting to me because web browsing, uh, anything with text really has been bad for a long time because the screens have honestly not been good enough. At the yeah. price point that uh, headsets have been being sold at, the, the screens ha have not been good enough and there wasn't really a great trajectory for them 
to become good enough um, because yeah, the price points have been kind of too low. We haven't seen an index two. Yeah. Um, if, if we had seen an index two, I feel like this would be a bit of a harder sell. <clears throat> uh, but because we've been in like low end headsets for a long time. Um, I mean, okay. Yeah. There's use cases I could imagine for it. Like I remember, um, uh, man, who is it? Someone I know knows someone. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, the, the SO of a friend of Yvonne's has a friend who does like just deranged high-end AV installations for like very, very wealthy people. Um, and so he, I remember him telling me about this one that his, his buddy was telling him about where the TV like pulls into a thing and then a thing slides down. And when it's out, it can like be controlled so it can point this way or it can like come up this way so you can watch TV when you're in the kitchen or, you know, whatever, right? Like it, um, so, okay, I could see wearing your headset, assuming the pass-through, they claim 12 milliseconds, which is really impressive. Assuming the pass-through is good enough that you could conceivably cook with your headset on. You know, if your TV show dynamically positioned itself somewhere where it was in the corner of your eye, but not interfering with what you're doing. And with eye tracking, with, uh, with machine learning, they could conceivably do something like that. Um, and if someone, you know, comes into the room, it automatically, you know, uh, make sure that you can hear them so you don't trip over your kids or whatever else. Like I, 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 I could see something like that being a valid use case for this thing. Entertainment while I'm cooking. The battery life sucks. Every other sort of category defining product that I can think of from Apple takes off when it boasts all day battery life macbook all day battery life iphone all day battery life airpods as long as you put them in the case a couple to all day battery life apple watch all day battery life if it doesn't last all day it doesn't exist and that's another big problem for me right is not only is it this tweener product that i have to go get when i want to use but i have to manage charging it oh i hate managing charging things anything that runs out of battery before i'm done with it for the day, this kind of automatically sucks. Am I off base here, though? Uh, I I think partially, um, but the reason why I think partially, <clears throat> so yeah, if it doesn't last all day, it's kind of dead. I agree, but a lot of the use cases that they're trying to sell this one on are like normy stuff, um, productivity, creativity those types of things, right? Um, a lot of situations where you could just be plugged in. Um, yeah, someone in, someone in the chat is saying, just plugged into your desk. I can't imagine yeah, but using it to desk. walk around. I absolutely I can. But what I think, what I think, well, a lot of what they're saying is you can get rid of your monitors, right? So I think, I think their use case is literally that. No, I can't get um, rid of my monitor as long as it has a two hour battery. I'm still gonna need my monitor. It might just, I might not need five you'd of be them. plugged in. Uh, yeah, but then I'm tethered to my desk again. What year is it? You're tethered to your desk uh, for a while. It doesn't mean permanently. Like you could literally, especially using pass through, yeah. you could literally get up and like go get a water and go to the washroom and come back and not take it off because you just unplug, have your battery bank with you, go do your things, come back, plug back in. I mean, by that I'm not logic, saying it's like, why do I need Bluetooth headphones then? I'll just unplug my wired headphones, go get something and then come back case. and plug it in. Well, this, this, what, what I'm saying is that this is being, no, it, it is completely different. What this is being marketed as is a screen replacement, a monitor replacement. You're not carrying your monitors around outside. It's you're, the, the replacement is not the same thing. You like we we did take. I'm wearing wired uh, uh, AirPod things right yeah, now. Yeah, you right? just like, destroyed these, these everyone's things. ears touching the microphone. By the way. Oh, I apologize. Sorry. Um, I actually thought I was on my laptop mic, but I guess not. Um, <laughs> but th th these are things that we carried around all over the place. Yeah, we so did. So having it without the wire makes a ton of sense. The use case that they're trying to replace, or the the main one that they seem to be targeting, is is not walking around outside. So I, I don't think comparing it to AirPods is fair. No, but it's it's being tethered again. I don't want to be always tethered either. I agree yeah. because you have the tugging cord and you have all yeah. this other super annoying stuff. Um, 
And I just, I, I don't, yeah. To be clear, I'm not saying it's doomed or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not hating on this thing. I haven't tried it personally yet. You know, and I, I even, t I told you guys, like, I can think of use cases for this that are consumer use cases. I just, I feel like it's one of those products where the price is enterprise, the marketing is average consumer, the real use case is pro slash enthusiast it's somewhere in, in yeah, yeah, somewhere in between and everybody's going to have to kind of get aligned on this at some point and it doesn't feel like we're there. And no, this is not the same as an electric car. <laughs> Someone said this what? coming from the guy with the electric car. Um, I don't take it on road trips. It's, 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 horse, it's horses for courses, right? And I'm just trying to figure out what course this horse is for. And I don't think Apple seems to know. That's my main issue. Yes. And I think yeah, if they I, knew, I yeah, I agree with that. They, would have, they would have waited to just launch, announce it and launch it and, and do it. They didn't have to announce this. And usually they don't. Usually they announce and launch. I think they're trying to figure out what the f this thing is. Honestly. I feel, yeah, I feel like the, um, what, what is it? Someone, someone was talking about, I don't, I don't know if this is official or not, but someone was saying it's like a, a hundred billion dollar investment or something. A hundred billion? That sounds There's no way that's like right. Like a lot. That's someone someone in flow plane chat said that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's about um, 100 billion. I mean, if they uh, never used micro OLED technology for anything else ever again, and if they, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, but they'll they'll reuse a lot of this, I suspect. Yeah, whatever they invested, I have genuinely no idea. Um, I think yeah, I think they're trying to figure out how to get their money back. Yuck Swan says, think... Linus, that's not true. Apple also announced the first gen iPhone. That was like 15 years ago, <laughs> 16, whatever it was. Sorry, go ahead. Um, I, I, yeah, I think they're just trying to poop it out. It, it was referenced, uh, you mentioned in, I believe it was last WAN show, the like, the the Apple Watch is zero, maybe 10 billion. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember what it was. I don't yeah, really Series care. zero. Whatever their investment was, it was super, it was super high. Um, the, the Apple Watch zero or whatever it was called, the first version, they like retconned. Yeah. It feels very much like that. Like they, yeah. they got like to the a point one. where, yeah, yeah. They got to a point where you can use it technically. Yeah. It does stuff. But it's It, it probably looks quite good. Like the, the screens probably look great. Yeah. Um, the eye pass through is something that um, Palmer was, Palmer Lucky was talking about uh, years ago, I think, like two or three years ago, talking about how that was probably going to be the future. Um, so like, that's not super surprising that like someone on that team probably listened to him, I guess. I don't know. Um, yeah. And they just need to like get it out now and they're Apple. So they're going to charge $3,500 for this thing that they just need to get out. Um, and it's time to move on from there, I guess. I don't know. Like, I'm not surprised that they don't have an amazing use case for it. It is what it is.